I'm Herb Cody, and this gyro mitra in my hand accounts for two to four percent of the deaths of human beings, and it really has a taste worth dying for. So here I am up at 8,300 feet at a place called Church's Pond, which is a subalpine lake in northern Nevada. Now, I'd come up here a day or two prior, just kind of investigating things, thinking things out, using trees as antennas, doing all sorts of grounding and healing. And I had come across this mushroom, which I knew absolutely nothing about. It just had a special something to it. And this goes against any type of conventional knowledge or wisdom. Everybody pretty much that sees this video is going to really be upset with me for picking and eating this mushroom because as you will find out later this mushroom is a bit taboo and considering the altitude was one indicator to me like hey i'm up pretty high in the air this thing's pretty special right that's without ever knowing whatever this mushroom was okay and then when i went and researched it and decided to hike back up and pull that thing out of the ground wash it in that natural subalpine lake and bring it down the mountain what the feeling of that mushroom how it fit in between my thumb and my middle finger the shape how it sat how i could hold it facing outwards or inwards to protect it or shield it the top the delicious top of what about the cues from the environment all around me. The weather, the general feeling I had in the atmosphere, the, the going down the hill, the, the signs, the signals, the, all this stuff is crazy talk to most people. And there's not very much scientific proof. But it doesn't mean it should be discounted. It could be ancient knowledge. And as I'm running down the hill with this mushroom, I can feel its joy on the adventure. Like, I grew for something. Someone recognized me all the way up here on this mountain and cut me and is bringing me down. And to me, yeah, you can die and all this stuff. I, I hope nobody misses the point that I'm saying. I think there's something more than just specialized knowledge and fear. All right, this was not Giga, it was Gyromitra, and I believe it to be Montana. There's lots of species of these false morels. Now, these things contain a compound which gets metabolized into a stuff called monomethylhydrazine in the body. Now, this is kind of fascinating to me because this is a carcinogenic compound, of course, and it's inside of rocket fuel. My friends, this means that this mushroom does natural biosynthesis of compounds in jet fuel and I'm gonna eat it so apparently not only does this mono methyl hydrazine uh, you know in the body does this metabolize into that into the body um, apparently also when you cook it the gas is released <laughs> into the air and uh, inhalation is is toxic as well so that is a strange thing for a mushroom, I think. Um, and I'm the guy who wants to skip the parboiling step to preserve this delicious flavor. And luckily, you know, I have my wife to tell me that I'm insane. I don't even really know what this mushroom is. So we should take all the necessary steps. And I'm going to show you some of those right now. So. Ventilation, obviously, is key. So I got this hood right here. We're gonna move this dog inside because this humidifier will be set without the drip and will serve to further exhaust any gases, hopefully, out of my house. 
Okay, so now we're gonna cook these, boil them for 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, this is what we have. Okay, these are out and now we're supposed to dry them thoroughly before we fry them and I must say they smell amazing and I also must say I've never had morels or anything like that so I don't know what to compare these to. Five minutes each side, that's avocado oil, salt, and a clove of garlic. So after five minutes we have flipped them to the other side and they should be done soon. So here we are. Hopefully this truly was Gyro Mitra, Montana. I don't know, but I'm gonna find out.